So season one is right around the corner, starting on March 28th. And I know that we all want to start the first official season of Suicide Squad as prepared as we can. Whether that means saving up your credits and not funding Toy Man a third 500 million credit super yacht. Stop it. Get some help. Saving up your Prometheum so you can go ham on the new incursions and other content they add in Season 1. Or maybe you are still trying to farm your way up the mastery levels and get better gear and all you need is more Prometheum. You might be trying to farm your Prometheum by running around the map finding the cargo knots, or maybe you're trying to complete the world missions to get a bit of Prometheum that way so you can farm a few incursions. It's pretty rough out there when you're first starting out and you don't have a stockpile of materials or currency. And Rocksteady has acknowledged that it is a bit hard to get Prometheum, and they made a few changes to the Raising Hell challenges a few weeks ago for how much Prometheum and loot you can get for completing the tiers. And I commend them for doing that, but I have found a faster method. This video will be another long one, but just like with the last build video, it will be well worth it. Let me explain. So now Tier 1 Raising Hell will give you 3,000 Prometheum, Tier 2 will grant you about 4,500 Prometheum, Tier 3 gives you 6,000, Tier 4 gives 7,000, and finally Tier 5 gives you 8,000 Prometheum, which gives you a total of 28,500 Prometheum if you complete all 5 Raising Hell tiers. And on top of that, each time you complete a Raising Hell tier, the hit squads that come after will drop more loot as well. The hit squad in Tier 1 will drop 3 items, Tier 2 will drop 4 4 items, Tier 3 gives 5 items, Tier 4 gives another 5 items, and Tier 5 gives another 5 items. And all that loot that they drop is either legendary or notorious as well. So they are definitely a good source for loot, and they are giving you a better reason to farm the Raising Hell tiers, especially if you're on the hunt for that famous stacked deck shotgun to complete the build that I posted in my last video, so your boomerang can hit for 1 billion damage. That is another great avenue for that. But here's the thing, when it comes to Prometheum, 28,500 lets you do 28 incursions or 9 runs of Brainiac. But it takes a good chunk of time to knock out all 5 Raising Hell tiers, and even though you get 22 pieces of gear for completing them, we are looking for efficiency, specifically time efficiency. We want to minimize the effort and time it takes to get as much Prometheum as we can. Think of it as like a Prometheum per hour ratio. If we take that 28,500 Prometheum for completing all 5 tiers, and say that it took us about 45 minutes to complete those 5 tiers, that means you would complete about 6 or 7 Raising Hell tiers in about an hour. And we have to factor in that after you finish tier 5, each tier that you complete after that continues to give you 8,000 Prometheum and another 5 loot drops from the hit squad. So if you took about 45 minutes to complete the first 5 Raising Hell tiers, and then you managed to complete another 2 tiers in the remaining 50 15 minutes of the hour, you would gain 28,000 from the first 5 tiers, then another 16,000 from the extra 2 tiers that you did at max. That means in an hour, you'd gain about 44,500 Prometheum at the minimum, and about 32 pieces of legendary or notorious gear. Then if you kept farming the max tier for raising hell for the additional 8,000 over and over again, assuming the final rank only takes you about 15 minutes to complete, you would get an additional 32,000 Prometheum per hour. And in a blazingly fast run if it took you about 30 minutes to complete the first 5 Raising Hell tiers, and then you managed to complete another 5 tiers in the remaining 30 minutes of the hour, you would get the 28,000 from the first 5 tiers, then another 40,000 from the extra 5 tiers that you did at max. That means in an hour you'd be gaining about 68,500 Prometheum at the minimum, and about 47 pieces of legendary or notorious loot. And then again, if you kept farming the max tier for Raising Hell for the additional 8,000 over and over again, assuming again the final rank takes you about 6 minutes to complete this time, you would get an additional 48,000 Prometheum per hour you spent farming the max tier. So even though these runs seem like great numbers, that's for a fast run. It could take you way longer than that depending on the task that each tier wants you to actually complete, which means that you won't get as much of the extra 8,000 Prometheum or the extra 5 loot drops for completing the extra tiers after you finish the first 5 tiers. That means that your Prometheum per hour ratio will go down significantly the longer it takes you to complete the first 5 tiers. And, with so much randomness involved in the tasks that it gives you per tier, it could take a long time to complete one of those tasks. It might give you a task to do like 3 missions in Petropolis, or kill 20 enemies with traversal, or to kill one cargo knot, and we all know how hard those things are to find sometimes. 
And if your build isn't built for traversal kills or getting critical kills, some of those challenges can take you another 10 to 20 minutes to complete. So looking at these numbers, I knew that I needed a bit more data to help me get a clearer picture. I needed to establish an average, so I put a message in my Discord asking for help. Which, by the way, huge thank you to Asmuel, Green, Psych, Bad Boy B, Poppy Kentan, and Rabbit for helping me test this. When I reached out to my community to help me test this, I looked at how long each person or group took to complete all five tiers, and the average time it took them to complete all five Raising Hell tiers was over 60 minutes. The slowest time someone took was like two hours to finish all five tiers. That someone might have been me, I got distracted. But excluding my ADHD results, the rest of the people completed all five tiers in about an hour or just over an hour on average. For example, some of the completion times that I got were an hour and 10 minutes, some were an hour and 20 minutes, and I had two of my community members, Green and Psych, running this in a duo squad because they have working multiplayer and I don't. So then testing this in a group was a huge help, thank you guys again. But when they joined each other, the time it took them to complete all five tiers together was about 45 minutes, and they had enough time to farm the max tier a couple of times for the extra 8,000 Prometheum, but solo, they said it was about an hour and 20 minutes. That's almost double the time to do it solo. So if you're the kind of person who doesn't have a lot of friends to run with, this is not the greatest option. But in a group, you could potentially complete all five tiers in that 30 minute window that we had actually mentioned earlier. Plus, I asked to each person what they would rate these Raising Hell playlists after getting to tier five. I told them to give me a rating of one through 10. One meaning it was a dumpster fire and you don't want to do that again ever, and 10 being a fantastic fun experience that you really enjoyed doing. And while the average score they gave it was about 4 out of 10 for solo players and a 5 or 6 out of 10 if you included some of the groups. The lowest score that I got was, and I quote, a massive dumpster fire out of 10. Which sounds pretty harsh, but some people really had bad luck with the tasks that were in the tiers and had to spend like 20 minutes trying to get critical kills, or traversal kills when they weren't specced into those for their build, or the fact that the world missions dropped tons of purple items on average, like it wasn't rewarding enough in terms of the Prometheum or mission loot that you got by the end of it, especially considering how long it took you to get to the final fifth tier. So comparing the results from my community, you can actually see the difference it makes to be fast in this method. And while not all of us can be crazy pro esports fast like the person who ran these numbers, so that's where this video can help you. In this video, we are going to go over how to more consistently farm the cargo knots around the map. I spent a long, long time researching this and running different tests. I have learned a lot about these little alien bug things, all the way down to how they spawn, where they can spawn, and how to make them respawn. This information will help you stop wandering around aimlessly trying to find cargo nuts. I spent a long time testing this out to find out as much info as I could on them. My goal was to remove as much mystery around them as possible and help us farm them if it were actually possible to do that. But at the very least, I wanted to understand the basics of their spawning so we could reduce the amount of time between cargo nuts that we actually find. So if this video helps you, I would greatly appreciate a like on the video and a comment down below to show your support and help this channel grow. But now, let's jump right into this. The first thing we're going to go over is the most important piece of information. We're going to talk about the mechanics of their spawns, but more specifically the spawning restrictions that they actually have. This is incredibly important because once we understand the mechanics of their spawns, we can understand how to find them more efficiently. And so the first piece of information that is absolutely crucial to understand about the cargo knots is that they do not spawn around the player. Sort of. Let me explain. So the cargo knots are very different than the drones or the tanks and stuff like that. They seem to be more server or game session bound. So instead of being able to walk in and out of places like the Hall of Justice to respawn them, it's a bit more complex than that because they're tied to the game session or possibly the server. For instance, in my testing, I found that wherever you first log in at when booting up the game, that sets a spawn point for your game session. And this spawn point then tells the game to not spawn cargo knots around that area, that spawn point. That's one of the reasons why you will not find a single cargo knot for a long time. But now you might be wondering, how far out from our spawn point do they start spawning? Well, this is where it gets a little bit more complex, so buckle up. So that spawn point for your character that blocks the cargo knots from actually spawning in has a radius. A pretty big radius, actually. But just how big of a radius is this spawn point, you ask? It is 600 meters. 
Yeah, it is 600 meters. What that means is that, let's say I spawned on the firearms incursion over here. This marker way over here is how far around your character the game considers your spawn point, which means that 600 meters in any direction, up, down, north, east, south, or west, you will not find a single cargo knot. It's literally a sphere with a 600 meter radius, it seems. But here's the good news. That spawn point stays right there the whole time. So all you have to do is run 600 meters away from your spawn point and you will start finding cargo knots. The only times you can actually move the spawn point is by quitting the session and re-logging in again. It will then move to the new spawn point location you have, or by going into a mission and leaving the mission again. Specifically, a mission that takes you out of Metropolis. For example, all of the incursion missions, killing time missions, and brainiac missions will all move your spawn point to wherever you are when you load back into Metropolis. This helps us because it allows us to immediately know where not to look. We can save time by just knowing where we spawned at after a mission or where you logged into the game at and running 600 meters away from that spot in any direction. Now, the next bit of info that I gathered is possibly equally important because it helps us know how these cargo nuts spawn more in depth. This is kind of weird, but bear with me. We're going to go over another mechanic of the spawning, which is spawn points. So like I said earlier, the cargo knots are very different from the AI that we see around the game world, like the tanks, helicopters, and the drones, as cargo knots are more bound to the game session or possibly the server you connect to while playing. This means that the spawning of the cargo knots isn't determined by some trigger volume that you can walk in and out of, like when I made the video farming the drones for our legendary care packages. Their spawning is actually determined by what I'm calling chunks, and this will make sense in a bit, but if you are familiar with the Minecraft chunks, it's very similar to that. So during my testing, I found out that I would often notice cargo knots spawning around certain areas of the map more frequently. I'd run through the airport up north and I'd find at least one or two pretty consistently. So it made me wonder if maybe certain areas of the map had a better chance of spawning cargo knots than other areas. So I continued to test it. I ran through the same areas over and over again. Each time I ran through, I noticed I would get a cargo knot, but the spawn point wasn't always the same. The only similarity between the spawn points was the general area where I would find them. So I kept testing. I ran through other areas with the same test, spawning in, running at least 600 meters away from my spawn point, and trying to see where the cargo knots would spawn around the map. During these tests, I noticed that when I went through an area, killed one or two of the cargo knots in that area, it didn't seem to matter how long I waited before coming back to that same area, the cargo knots were not respawned. The area was still cleared out. That's when it hit me. The game must have certain regions of the map, small little sections that can spawn cargo Cargo knots. And if you kill the cargo knots for that chunk, it's just gone. And no amount of time or distance seemed to make them respawn from what my tests actually showed. This would explain the other reason people can't seem to find cargo knots for a long time. They probably clear out like 5 to 10 cargo knots, which means 5 to 10 areas no longer have one, and they don't respawn after a while either. So we've all been running around aimlessly waiting for them to randomly respawn, but what we should have been doing is taking a mental note of where we spawned at, running 600 meters away from that spot, then taking more notes on all of the areas of the map that you found a cargo knot at. Because those chunks that you found the cargo knot in are now empty and you need to keep running around to new chunks and looking for them there. Doing that will help you minimize the time spent looking around for them and will give you a better understanding of where to look or rather where not to look, mentally just crossing off the areas that you found a cargo knot in as you run through them. But here's the final piece of the super convoluted puzzle that is Cargonauts. They're spawning. If we look within those chunks and we analyze all of the places we see them spawn, we will see them spawning in certain spots over and over again. It doesn't seem to be guaranteed or anything. There is still a bit of randomness involved, but it seems like there's a select number of spots they can spawn at within areas of the map, like certain chunks. So that means if you run up north to the airport, there's a high possibility that you will find a Cargonaut here on the wall, or maybe over here on this other wall, or maybe up on the roofs, or maybe they are inside the underground part down here, hanging out from the raised platforms, or maybe just hanging down from certain platforms randomly. Basically, within each chunk, there are a certain number of dedicated spawn points you can check for the best chances of finding a Cargonaut. 
So as you run through certain areas of the map, you should try to keep in mind where you've seen cargo knots previously, because those are all spots to check for them again. And if they aren't at that specific spot, check nearby because they are probably still in the local area. You just need to find the new spawn point they chose within that chunk. This pretty much means that unless we have some absolute tech gurus in the community or maybe rocks that he could bless us, wink wink, nudge nudge, we probably won't have a map for cargo nut spawns because the map would have to show every single chunk within the game world. And then within each chunk that we would have to have each potential spawn point. And the spawn points aren't just on a level plane we have insane verticality with them, and some chunks seem to have like 15 different spawn points within them. Plus, it doesn't help there's no set definition or rule or size restraint to how big a chunk can actually be for my testing. Like the airport that I've mentioned seems to be one big chunk, or maybe it's two chunks stacked on top of each other. But like I said, each chunk has multiple set spawn locations for the cargo knots, so you might have to do a bit of searching to find them. Especially if you're near Lex Tower or anywhere up there. Thankfully, chunks can be pretty tiny enough to where you have multiple spawn points that can be next to each other, but in the northern part of the map, there's so much verticality that it makes it really, really hard to find where the cargo knots have actually spawned. That being said, thankfully, it is typically rare to find cargo knots on the tippy top of a building like that, so you can check up there if you want to, but I'd still recommend checking more mid-level of those super tall buildings or near the street level. That's where they like to spawn it. And I can't forget to mention that sometimes it seems like you might find two cargo knots really close to each other, not like directly on top of each other, but like down the street. And so I don't know if each chunk can have two cargo knots, if it's big enough, or if it's just two chunks next to each other. Like I mentioned earlier, the airport up north seems to have a chance of spawning two cargo knots in it or near it, but it could just be two chunks next to each other or on top of each other. There's still a little bit of mystery around these chunks, but if you would like to run some tests with me or let me know what you have found in the comments down below, I would greatly appreciate that. But now, the first farm method is for the solo players. I'm working on a method for multiplayer, but like I said earlier, my multiplayer still isn't working. So the multiplayer version for this will be out a little bit later when I can gather more data and footage to actually show you all how it works. So be sure to subscribe if you guys want to see that. But for the solo method, I ran several tests to actually see how efficient this was and compared the numbers to the Raising Hell numbers from before. And this farm is the most efficient way to actually get Prometheum and credits. This method is way more consistent, but due to the way cargo knots spawn, it seems it's not 100% guaranteed to give a cargo knot in every single chunk that you go to, but that's still way better than spending 20 minutes trying to complete one task for one tier. And I will go over all the spots that I've noticed cargo knots at so far, so that way you don't have to search too hard to actually find them. So the main area that we're going to farm is, shocker, it's the Hall of Justice again. To start this one, head over to this area on the map, we are looking for the Wayne Bank building. Go to the top of it and save and quit to the main menu. Then go right back into the game. This is now your new spawn point up on top. But here's the cool thing. Instead of spending like 30 to 45 seconds running there, we can just open the map and fast travel to the Hall of Justice. Fast traveling only takes like 20 seconds to spawn in and run out. And once they decrease the load times, this will get even faster. But once you run out front, you have a few places you should be able to check from the front door. So if you don't see any from the front door right there, go to your left and check these buildings across the street. Go over the buildings and checking the rooftops while you do, and then go into the alley and check this wall right here on the other side. Then turn around and check the metal rooftop just a bit further down and the wall behind it. Those two spots on the metal roof and the wall behind it are two kind of sneaky spots. And then you can check the rooftop over here near Hack and the rooftop encampments that will spawn there. And then go down the ledge and then check down here on this little platform and on the ad billboard itself. If you don't see one during that time, just move on for the time being, and we can come back a little later on. After that spot, we go over to the Hall of Justice. This is one big chunk, but thankfully there's only a few spawn points that I've actually seen them spawn at. The first one is really easy to spawn, it's on these pillars on the walls right here. Then I go up and I check the walkway on the roof and use that to wrap around the back of the building where I look here. If you don't see one, I continue running around checking the other side now. Looking at this side's walkway, looking at the pillars, and then hopping up on top of the main pillars by the front. If you don't see any of them on this place here, then I drop down to this grassy section here and check right here. This one's a sneaky one. I quickly glance at the top of the tower down the road to see if there's one on the top. After that, I run to the base of the tower we just checked to see if I find one on the wall of the Hall of Justice. 
or maybe by these stairs, or on the actual base of the tower itself. If they didn't spawn at any of these places, then check across the street at this building over here. They can be on this wall sometimes as well, or on the roof, or in the archway right around the corner up these stairs. Then I run back through this entrance to the Hall of Justice Courtyard and check inside of all three of these archways. Then I move through this other arch over to here and head down the street to the monorail station. They can sometimes spawn here by the door of it, or around the left side of the wall over here, right on this little spot on the wall. Then I hop up and look down the middle between the two little monorail things. And if nothing is there, then I hop up to the roof again and I check as I run down. So after checking the roof, I keep heading down the street here, looking down as I run or teleport, making sure that I don't miss any of them on the walls beneath me or on the Brainiac platforms just next to us and then ending at this building here. Once I get here, I check the wall, and then I check the back side of this other small building that I'm near as well. And then I wrap around to the front side and check this ledge on the front side of it. And then I run through the archway down to this red building over here. They can be on the front side of this red building here. They could also be on the side of the building near the round platform. And speaking of the round platform here, check up there as well. Then just go around to the other side near the water and check the wall here near this alleyway. And then the final places to check around here is this spot on the roof over here. And then finally, on top of the tracks way up here. This is where you'll probably miss one. And then while I'm usually up here, I look out with my sniper to see if there's any cargo knots and I can actually snipe from a distance. But after that, I just head back to the Wayne Bank building, but on my way back, I check just a few more areas. Another one is this brown brick building. They are usually here a good chunk of the runs that I do. Then I run across the street from the first place we checked near Hack, and you have this spot right here in the bushes and the shrubbery. Then just past those spots, you have this staircase here where they can be on the inside of that one hanging down. And once you're done looking for all of those, you just go back to the roof of the Wayne Bank building, save and quit to the main menu, and then go right back into the game and repeat the whole process. So then once you're back in the game, you just go back to the Hall of Justice and you do it all over again. It's that simple. And again, after you've run this a bunch of times, you get more and more familiar with the areas that they can actually spawn in. And it never hurts to take your time looking around at first if you are not too concerned about shaving off as much time as possible. This Hall of Justice area gives me about 10 to 13 cargo knots in about 10 minutes. That's in the range of 15,000 to like 19,500 Promethium each run, which means if you farmed this area for one hour, you'd get about 90,000 Promethium or 117,000 Promethium. That is a 103% increase to Promethium in the same time frame as Raising Hell. And for the credits you would also get, you get about 600,000 to 780,000 credits per run. So in an hour, you'd get between 3.6 million and 4.6 million credits in one hour. The only thing you're lacking from these runs is really the loot, but with all the new Promethean that you have, you can farm hundreds of incursions per day. So you can actually get all of the loot that you want. And because it takes less time and gives you more Promethium than Raising Hell, you could do this for 30 minutes and get roughly 58,500 Promethium, and then go do incursions for 30 minutes and get about 24 pieces of loot if you can actually complete Mastery 50 in about 10 minutes each. So like I mentioned earlier, this does not take away all of the randomness of Cargonauts, but with all of this information, it helps you be as efficient as possible when trying to actually farm Promethium. And for most people that I talked to, Raising Hell just wasn't that fun unless you liked learning the map more or got lucky and didn't get these really annoying tasks. And some people didn't even kill the hit squad, so they missed the loot drops for them too. These methods solve the tedium of all of that. But like I said, this method is more meant for solo grinding. So if you want to see the multiplayer version, let me know with a like and a comment down below and I will get started with that as soon as I can, or whenever they fix the multiplayer for me as well. The only bad part about this method is that saving and quitting to the main menu takes about one whole minute to do even on a high-end PC with a PCIe Gen 4 drive. It's a 30 second load to the main menu and a 30 second load to the game again. 
so if they optimize the game even more, this method will take even less time overall. But overall, the Hall of Justice is still the best place to farm your Prometheum and credits due to the fast travel and density of the different chunks. You could even shoot some drones while you're at this and get your daily care package to legendary. And because the Raising Hell playlists don't reset when you leave to the main menu, it's only if you leave the game, you can actually complete some of those as well if they're easy enough. I have completed tier 1 a few times while farming this. But I do hope this helped you. If it did, feel free to leave a like on the video. It would mean a lot to me if you did. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future content. I have plenty of other content planned, so I hope you enjoy that. But really quickly, I wanted to give a special shout out to all of the members on this channel. So a special thanks goes to Emperor Frieza, BJ, Hobostar, Rabbit, PsychVillain22, Ghosting You, Ethan Becker, Future14K, Retrospec, Harles Quinn420, Eric Grubb, Eric E, Sindoa09, Behemoth Titan, Champagne Poppy, Chris Main Niranen, Nanostorm, Dark Dimension, Manny, and Green Ranger32. Thank you all once again so much for your support of this channel and for being the nerdiest of the nerds for multiple weeks, if not multiple months by now. This community and the channel's growth wouldn't be possible without all of you, so thank you. If you would like to support the channel even further, you can always click that join button on my channel and join the nerdiest of the nerds. The support is never forced or expected, but it helps tremendously. And I will always be very, very appreciative of all that you do to help my dreams be a reality. I would not be here without all of your support. And if you're looking for like-minded people who just love this game and want to see it grow and flourish, you are on the right channel. And if you want to find other people to play with when they fix the multiplayer bug and drop Season 1, join my Discord. I will leave a link to join in the video's description. We are an amazing community in there for my Twitch and YouTube side as well. But I also want to know, how much Prometheum do you have right now? And what mastery level are you on right now as well? Let me know in the comments down below. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your way out. Thank you so much for watching. Later, nerds.